QNAP offers a number of ways to set up and allocate your storage. While this flexibility enables you to configure your QNAP specifically to your needs, there are some elements of the setup that you may not be familiar with if you're new to network attached storage. This is to help you navigate your way through the initial storage setup so that you can optimally configure your storage for your needs. We're going to be covering RAID setup, storage pool creation, and volume creation, including the differences between thick, thin, and static volumes. For this tutorial, I've just initialized the NAS, but I haven't created any volumes or storage pools. At this point, I can access the NAS interface, but I can't create shared folders and I can't install apps because I don't have any storage allocated from the drives with the exception of a small partition created for a few basic pre-installed apps when you initialize the NAS. QNAP's storage structure is composed of RAID groups, storage pools, and volumes. And then within volumes, you can create shared folders and load apps. Storage pools are built by creating a RAID group. You can have a single storage pool on a RAID group, multiple storage pools on different RAID groups, or you can have a storage pool that is composed of multiple RAID groups. We'll start by creating a storage pool. So open the Storage and Snapshots app, which can be opened by clicking the icon or selecting it from the main menu drop-down tab. Next, navigate to the storage slash snapshots section by selecting it on the left side tab. This is where storage pools and volumes are created and managed. Select new storage pool to begin the storage pool creation wizard. The first page is an intro page. This is where you can set up auto tiering if setting up SSD or SAS storage for tiered storage. However, I'm not using any SSDs and tiering is outside of the scope of this video, so I'll leave it unchecked. But if you are interested in auto tiering, you can reference our tutorial video, QNP 431, NAS Administration, Creating Q-Tier Storage. When ready, click Next. This brings you to the disk selection page, which will show you all of the disks populating your NAS that have not yet been allocated. Check the boxes of the disks that you would like to use, and then select the RAID type that you want to configure the disks as. RAID stripes together drives for redundancy and increased performance. Assuming you have enough drives, QNAP supports RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, RAID 50, RAID 60, single disks, and JBOD. There's also a hot spare option on the right side if you prefer to allocate one of your drives as a hot spare for the RAID group to automatically be used to rebuild the RAID in the event of a drive failure. After making your selections, click Next. This brings you to the Configure page of the wizard. This is where you can set aside storage space to be guaranteed as reserved for snapshots, and also where you can set custom SSD over provisioning if using SSD storage. Over provisioning sets aside a small portion of the total storage to facilitate optimal performance and reliability. Make your selections and click next. The final page of the wizard will display a summary of your chosen configuration. If you want to make revisions, you can navigate to previous pages with the back button. Otherwise, if everything is to your liking, click create to create the storage pool. Now that we have a storage pool created, we can allocate some storage from the pool to create a volume on the storage pool. To start, select new volume to begin the volume creation wizard. And on the first page of the wizard, we need to decide whether we want to create the volume as a thin volume, a thick volume, or a static volume. So let's take a moment to go over the differences between each of these. This option has to do with the manner in which data is allocated from the raw storage to be written to. Thin volumes have lower performance than thick volumes, but have more flexibility. On a thin volume, blocks of data are allocated to be written on as the writing occurs. The extra step of allocation occurring when data is written is the reason that thin volumes are a little slower than the other options. However, 
because the storage isn't pre-allocated, it is still available in the storage pool after the volume has been written. One thing to be mindful of if you do use a thin volume is that there may be less storage space available in the storage pool than you have set for the thin volume. When you make a thin volume, the size of that volume is not reserved, but rather just a limit of how much storage may theoretically be allowed in that volume. So for instance, you could have a 12 terabyte thin volume, but only six terabytes in the storage pool. In this instance, you won't be able to store more than six terabytes in that 12 terabyte thin volume. Thin volumes can even be made larger than the entire storage pool that it's created on, but in reality, you won't have access to any more storage than is on the storage pool. But this could be an option for someone who has plans to add drives and make the pool larger down the road and doesn't want to bother making the volume larger when they do that. Thick volumes have better performance than thin volumes, but are less flexible than thin volumes. When you create a thick volume, you are pre-allocating blocks of data to be written on from the storage pool. So once the volume has been created, you've taken a chunk of data the size of that volume from the storage pool and allocated it for that specific volume. And that data can't be used for another volume because the storage is allocated from the start. Once the volume is created, the data can be written faster than on a thin volume. A static volume is a legacy volume that is created directly on the RAID group without a storage pool. It is the least flexible and is incompatible with a few advanced features of the QNAP, but if you are migrating from an older NAS that was configured as a static volume, the option is still available to accommodate upgrading to a new NAS. Without storage pools, static volumes allocate all of the data from a RAID group. One implication of this is that you can't use snapshots on a static volume because snapshots are stored outside of the volume on the storage pool. Another implication is that you can't create a block-based iSCSI LUN on a static volume. You would only be able to create a file-based LUN on a static volume. And you can't create multiple static volumes on one RAID group. One thing to keep in mind is that QNAP supports the option to resize a thick or thin volume to make it larger or smaller. In my case, I'm going to select thick volume as I want the improved performance over a thin volume and I don't want to worry about monitoring my data stored in the volume like I might need to do with a thin volume. And I also don't want the functionality limitations of a static volume. But in certain circumstances, another volume type could potentially serve your needs better. Make your selection and click next. On the second page of the volume creation wizard, you will name the volume and set the size of the volume. You'll also see how much storage space is available on the storage pool. If you want to create the volume as an encrypted volume, this is where you can make that selection as well. Once the volume is created, you won't be able to encrypt it later. Additionally, you can set the threshold alert under advanced settings, which is the point at which you'll be alerted of the storage space running low. You can also configure an SSD cache here if you are using SSDs for caching. Under the advanced settings, you'll also see a place where you can select bytes per inode. An inode is a data structure in Linux that stores file metadata, like which blocks of data a particular file is stored on. Practically speaking, right on the wizard page, you can see how this decision will affect your storage. Basically, the selection that you make will determine the maximum size that the volume could theoretically be and the maximum number of files and or folders that the volume could theoretically store. For me, the default of 32,000 is fine, so I'll just leave it at that. Make your selections and click next. And finally, this brings us to the volume summary page. If everything is to your liking, click finish. Now I have storage space that is ready to be used, so I can create shared folders that can be mounted to my workstation to transfer data, I can install applications from the App Center, and 
I could create a nice SCSI LUN on the storage pool if I wanted to. QNAP's storage structure is flexible and optimizable for a number of diverse use cases. I hope this video has helped you better understand how to best configure your NAS storage structure. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at usasales at qnap.com or just drop a comment below. And be sure to check out the rest of our videos to better utilize your QNAP NAS.